Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over the uh, overall interface of the FCS Networker software. Um, when you load it up, this is uh, what you'll see right here. You'll have the list of accounts that we support on the left. Um, you'll have your select all, deselect all, uh, select failed. Um, if you click select failed accounts, that's after you've run an account creation project. If you click select failed, it will select the accounts that have failed if you uh, want to try those again. Um, you create accounts button and stop button are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the web tool button will load up the web tool in the browser and you just sign in and it's just a quick way to access the web tool. You'll see up top you got your new project, open project, and save project button. Um, new project will just uh, well, actually, I'll show you that. Let's show you the open project. So if you do the open project, you'll see your list of past projects. Um, and if you click load, it'll load up um, your past projects, all the information that you had right there, and which accounts uh, still need to be created. The ones with an X weren't created under this project. Um, so you'll see X is here. This is because uh, this was before we supported some of these sites. So what's cool about this is we always add new sites. You could go back to old projects and you'll see like the end of the list here are some sites that we didn't always support. So you could just then use that email address and all those settings and then just create those um, additional accounts under uh, that email address. Um, so it, you know, is a way to go back and reuse some of your email addresses to create uh, the newer accounts that we add in and whatnot. Uh, if you start a new project, a new project uh, demo, you'll see uh, everything's cleared out and you just have a new project name and you're ready to start fresh with a new project. And save project will just save uh, all your project details. Um, now let's get into this uh, account info tab right here. So you got your new project wizard. Uh, this I'll show you during the actual account creation video. This is the quickest and easiest way to just set up your project. Um, it's a cool tool and it just walks you through every step in about 15 seconds you're up and ready to just press create accounts and get going. Create one set or create multiple. Uh, this is how many sets of accounts you want to create. So if we select all here, this is one set of accounts. So if you wanted to create multiple, let's say you wanted to create three sets, um, this would create uh, three entire sets of these accounts. Um, so let's just go back to one set. Uh, get pre-created Hotmail. If this is checked, uh, the software will go in and download a pre-created Hotmail that we've already created. Uh, it'll download it from our servers and uh, so it's just quicker and easier than actually creating the Hotmail yourself. If you prefer to create the Hotmail, you can auto-create a Hotmail. Um, so you can just check that feature. We have auto-verify emails, which will automatically verify your emails after the account creation. Auto-update profiles will automatically update your profiles after the accounts have been created and verified. It'll then go in and update the themes, profiles, uh, blog titles, descriptions of the sites that support them. Every site is different. Some support don't have allow you to change the pictures. Some don't allow themes. Some don't have blog descriptions, things like that. But it goes in and does what it can for the sites, uh, each individual site. Check this if you're using proxies. And then we have our auto upload accounts feature. This, if you checked after you create accounts, if that's checked, it'll automatically upload those successfully created accounts to your um, web account to use uh, in the web tool for submission and whatnot. So then we have threads here. As you can see, the more threads equals more CPU strain. Um, you can choose between one and nine. For those who are unfamiliar, a thread is how many simultaneous tasks are going on. So if you have three threads, that means it's opening um, three uh, sockets to create accounts at the same time. 
So this will use more CPU power. So if you find the bot is getting unresponsive or sluggish or whatnot, I would lower your thread, um, how many threads you're using. But three is a good start, and that's the default. Uh, this big blue button right here is basically our announcements button. It's constantly changing. Right here you see the announcements, MySpace blogging now supported. Uh, we've had MySpace account creation for a long time, but now our web tool supports the submission. So we set it up so if you click this button, it'll automatically upload all your past created MySpace accounts to the web tool. So now they're usable and ready to go. And so this will change um, constantly with just announcements and whatnot. And then you have your view user manual. This, if you click, will uh, just open up the user manual for you to reference at any time. Um, account information. So you have your project name, which will be the name of the project. Um, the email address that you're using for the project. Password and username. Username is spinnable. Uh, the auto-generate account data button. If you click that, it'll... Uh, automatically generate a password and a username just makes it really easy on you um, now the load hotmail account button most people won't use this button but what this does is it loads the first available hotmail account in your hotmail accounts uh, list so both of these are used but let me change this to available so let's say you had 300 pre-created hotmail accounts you wanted to use you just enter them into this hotmail accounts that txt file in your folder and then you just put comma available next to them showing the bot that they are available to be used so if you uh, didn't want to get a pre-created hotmail or auto create a hotmail you can just click the load hotmail button and it will load the first available account now see that's it available but now when we reload the hotmail accounts.txt file you see that it's been switched to used so it's just a quick way to keep your hotmail accounts it doesn't even need to be hotmail you can put any email account in there um, so if you you want to use whatever email accounts if you have AOL accounts if you have your own personal account um, just put a comma so it's uh, the hotmail or the email address, comma, password, comma, and then you put available next to it, and the software will automatically switch it to used after it's used it. Um, so we got our email verifier. Email verifier um, will usually automatically detect the settings for hotmail, AOL, Gmail. Um, for private emails and stuff, you'll probably have to put in your own. You could test the email to see if it's working which will just let you know if it's if our uh, software has been able to connect to the email server. Um, and then if you want to manually verify emails, that's how you would do that. They just click verify emails manually. Our Hotmail creator is just a very quick and easy Hotmail creator. You set how many accounts you want to create. Uh, let's say five, you want to use proxies, and then just hit create Hotmail accounts. So it's... Uh, it's not a Hotmail cre creator with a lot of uh, bells and whistles, but it's just a quick, easy, user-friendly Hotmail creator. Our account viewer is uh, where you can find a lot of information on your accounts. As the account creation process is happening, the account viewer will show the accounts that are created with all their in information like uh, username, password, and stuff like that. So it's a way you can view accounts. This is where you can get the homepage links. So if you load up a project, um, let's open this project again. And then if I wanted to, so you can see, this is the view accounts. View accounts right here it shows the accounts, usernames, passwords, uh, the project that it's under. Then um, view homepage links. So it's going to go in, in and grab the homepage URLs of the uh all this, these sites and then give you a list of the homepage URLs. So if you want to build links to the homepage URLs, if you have software that needs the homepage URLs or what, for whatever reason, this is a great way to go in and find the homepage URLs. Um, you could use our uh,
you'll see that it's got all the homepage URLs right there for that specific project. The View FCS Bulk Account Export. If you click this button, it puts the uh, what's in the account viewer in the proper format to bulk import to the uh, FCS web tool. Um, the software automatically does this for you, but if you wanted to go back and do it manually, you could just get the format view FCS bulk account export there. You just grab all this, copy, go to the web tool, uh, open up the bulk importer, and then just uh, paste, and then all these accounts would be imported. Um, open web 2.0 account file. Um, this will open the file to show your web 2.0 account, so the file that's saved with all the information. Uh, same with the social account file. Um, the upload accounts to web tool button, if we click this, this will just automatically upload these accounts to the web tool. You could do upload it to the web tool with no category. You could upload it as the project name is the category. Um, you could give a new category that you want these accounts uploaded to. Or you could name an existing category that you already created in the web tool to upload the accounts to. So it's just really quick and convenient way to integrate the software with the web tool and get your accounts in there easily and quickly. Now the profile updater, um, so let's deselect. So we'll select all right here, get rid of the accounts that weren't created. Um, so let's say we wanted to re-go in and update these profiles. You can uh, just add your own blog title, blog description, and bio to use in the account uh, profile update, updating process. They're all spinnable. Um, so if you wanted, if you had a car insurance site, you could, you know, put in spun car insurance titles, descriptions, bios, thing like things like that to really make your um, blogs uh, really tie into your keywords and what you're going after. But if you're like me and you're using these accounts for general purposes a lot of the time, um, which a lot of my accounts I do use, you could just click the auto generate profile details and then just click update profiles and our software will automatically update um, titles, descriptions, bio. They won't be keyword specific for you, but there'll be things like, uh, you know, uh, my article site or my new blog or just general titles and descriptions and bios. Um, so that's basically an overview of the interface. Uh, the next video will actually go into account creation. I'll show you how quick and easy that is and how easy it is that, to just tie all this together and get your accounts imported into the web tool and whatnot. So I'll see you on the next video.